How's it going everybody? Well, just over a week now, one day over a week exactly, uh, in hyposalinity treatment here. Still having trouble with that pH, and I don't know if you can tell, you can't see it on camera, but you can see it in person. I'm starting to get a slight haze in the water. And now that's from all the sodium carbonate that I'm using to try and buffer this water. Uh, up to an 8.0 or better kind of lowered my standards here um, every night I when I change the water it, it gets to about an 8.0 next morning it's like a 7.8 at least I'm not dropping far below that but what's happening is that I'm using so much of the sodium carbonate to try and buffer the water that now I have to be careful that my alkalinity doesn't spike and, and get into an uncomfortable range the fish don't seem too stressed, but I think the Coral Beauty, she's coming out right here now on camera. She's been hiding a lot in the PVC, which is something that she wasn't doing uh, before. So I'm thinking that uh, she might be stressed just a little. She's spending a lot of time hiding. The clowns, just like when they were in the main display, don't leave the right hand side of the tank very much. But back uh, back on track here I gotta watch the alkalinity the DKH level in the tank um, so I've been looking online and you know everybody seems to have the same problem when they're in hyposalinity and that's the pH uh, and you know I've been searching and searching and then there I came up with like two uh, came across two ways to do it both not very easy both pretty involved and complicated well, actually, three. There's a drip method. Uh, you can drip this, the uh, sodium carbonate, but you're still going to have that problem where you might uh, you, you might get a spike in your DKH and your alkalinity. The other two, there's a two-part system. Uh, read briefly on it, seemed pretty involved. Uh, and then another one was to put macroalgae in. Now I don't have a light system on my hospital tank so that that's out. So basically I'm going to just try and keep it as, as stable as possible and keep it from swinging. Uh, just by, you know, I'm not going to try and buffer it so high so I'm having huge swings. Since it's kind of resting at that 7.8 mark and uh, doesn't really slip below that too much, I'm going to just try and maintain a stable pH and go with the maintaining a stable pH rather than trying to achieve this pH that it seems like I'm never going to get to or that it's going to swing from because I think the swinging will be more harmful to the fish than, uh, than a lower pH than the, what they're used to. And then when in my last week of hyposalinity uh, when it starts going up they'll be able to acclimate you know my salt mixture will be taking care of that that pH and that'll rise with the salinity and they'll be acclimated to that and match the display and so on. So that's the new plan. Just try to keep it as stable as possible. Not worry as much about the number. You know I definitely want to keep the number up there. Don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. But uh, maintaining more stable is is the new the new approach. And Another thing that I thought of here, and we'll come down. Now, I was looking at it, and these are my test cards. One's the fresh water, and the fresh water is there on the left, and then the other is the salt water. And something I'm thinking about or been kicking around the idea of is how accurate are my pH tests? You know, the salt water basically is around 34 35 percent. Uh, salt so the colors are matched for that fresh water actually zero salt mixture and so you know when I'm in I'm in hyposalinity here which is around a 12 percent to 13 percent salinity so how accurate are my color coatings now if you can see they're actually pretty different where I'm at 7.8 in the salt puts me right around the 8% mark in fresh and 8.0 uh, parts per million in, in salt water 
is roughly the 8.2 in fresh. So if I'm right there, right in this range here, I'm thinking I can call it good. You know, I gave a shout out to one of my subscribers. She's uh, got a great fish room and uh, got a great brackish tank. Try and get uh, an idea on how she tests for her pH, how she buffers it if she has to and that type of thing. And when I hear back from her, I'll be able to pass along more. But uh, that's kind of been going through my mind right now. How accurate is my pH test? So that's another reason why I'm going with like, just keep it stable, man. Just keep it stable as possible. Your fish have made it one week, seven weeks to go. And uh, let's just hope that they make it. You know, I'll just go for the stable. Go for the stable, Stever. Display still doing well, just gave it a good clean. And uh, The nitrates are still up there, but uh, my algae scrubber not producing. I got to break in that screen, I think. But we have uh, several things going on here, but the hyposalinity and the pH, that's just where I'm at right now. One week down, seven weeks ago, people. Catch you next time.